just since October 7th, I've just seen you on Twitter primarily. Um, <laughs> super active with regard to, uh, you know, what has happened, primarily what has happened on campuses um, and, and the protests on campuses and the rising anti-Semitism on campuses. I see you super active on that. And I know um, recently you took a group of, or you helped organize a group of um, legal scholars uh, to do a trip on uh, to Israel, uh, and uh, and went to see some of the some of the sites of the of the you know the the horrors of October seventh. I actually talked about it with Boaz on on I should do a show in Hebrew, and we talked about your trip there a little bit on that show. Um, so let's start maybe with what did so what did October seventh kind of mean to you personally, I guess. I mean, you're an objectivist. You have Jewish origin, just like I am, right? But but you're an objectivist. What, what, but you're not Israeli. You don't really have a connection to Israel, or a strong connection to Israel that I know of. Um, yeah. What did October 7th mean to you? And then maybe what did the protest mean? Because I think that's a whole other dimension. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean... So for those who know, I, you know, my, my online presence has been almost entirely in the context of intellectual property and innovation policy and talking about like, you know, rocket, you know, moon rockets and stuff. <laughs> like I'm a geek. Um, and, but October 7th, um, really, uh, shocked me to the core. Um, and, uh, as it did everyone else and rightly so, and it, 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 it woke me up in a certain sense. Um, you know, um, <clears throat> Especially when I, you know, when you heard, saw the response in the United States, um, you know, Barry Weiss framed it once in one of her talks as kind of, she said, you know, J American Jews got complacent. We made a mistake and we felt like it couldn't happen here. And that was a mistake. Um, it can't. Um, and, it, you know, and it was kind of a slap in the face that, you know, yes, I'm an objectivist. I was raised Jewish and I haven't really identified as being Jewish, but you know that that to nihilists and, and you know and 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 Hamas and Hezbollah and Iran and 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 the, and the people protesting on campuses and in the streets of the United States they don't care, um, they're collectivists and and they'll send me to the gas chambers or or slaughter me and my family just as much as they will anyone else because they view me as being Jewish. Yeah, I mean, I think I think that's I mean that's always been my case for why I support Israel. I mean, in an ideal world. There would really not be a Jewish state. You wouldn't yeah. support a Jewish state, but um, the world doesn't care if if you want to assimilate or not. The world doesn't care. It it what was the, there was a there's a test of how much Jewish blood, whatever the hell that means, you have in you, and and you yeah. off to the gas chamber if you have it, no matter what your professed beliefs are, yeah. uh, or, or, or what you hold. So it, it, Israel's there's a as an escape valve. Somebody you, we need. You know, Jews need to go somewhere uh, when when um, when they're out to get when they're out to get us. Uh, so yeah. uh, having it you know, is important. And it's a, you know, and it really is an interesting phenomenon how you know the, this you know this this two thousand year old you know Jew hatred uh, you know exists and has and not just existed but has persisted and gotten worse in the in the modern era. Um, and and my kind of pet theory on this, you know, I, I we never talked about this before. Yeah. So I don't know yeah. if you shared is that kind of, you know, in a, you know, well, so my view on it is, is anti-Semitism is always the tip of the spear of kind of a broader nihilistic ideology that is anti-Western civilization. It's anti-freedom, anti-reason. And Jews, if you have this perspective, this nihilistic perspective, and especially today, this intersectionalistic, intersectionalist Marxist perspective, Jews kind of are the are the constant exemplar of what's wrong with your theory um, because that, you know, they're the oppressed people for 2000 years and yet they integrate and they succeed far yep. beyond their, 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 their scant numbers. And so in a certain sense, you know, they, you have to rid the world of Jews if, if because they come to exemplify and embody everything you hate and also everything that's wrong with your theory. Have you ever read um, Karl Marx's on the Jewish question? I read a portion of that essay. Yeah. I mean, and he, 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 as all, as all evil people do, right? He exactly identified this, right? And he identified, yeah. I mean, he says the problem with Jews is they're selfish in, in, in a good way. Yeah. They're capitalists. <laughs> Capitalist. yeah. mm -hmm. And the problem with the Christians is they're too Jewish. Yeah. <laughs> they've adopted uh, Christianity. Yeah. They've adopted capitalism and, and, uh, and self-interest. And, uh, and it's true. I, I'm, I'm actually reading a book right now. 
called Constantine's Sword. It was, mm-hmm. it, it, it was, yeah. it's about the origins of anti-Semitism mm-hmm. uh, in, it's written by a Catholic in Catholicism, in the church at, at, from the beginning, from, from the very beginning. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, it's fascinating. It really is fascinating. And, you know, Carl, Marx grew up in a very anti-Semitic Christian environment, even though he was, his parents were originally Jewish. But he he grew up in a Christian environment that was very anti-Semitic at the time, mm-hmm. uh, with all the tropes of you know, all the stories about it. And you know, you need an you need an other, and you need you need an other to blame everything on. Mm-hmm. And uh, and successful Jews, uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, a repudiation of everything they believe in. Yeah. Uh, so. So tell me a little bit about, you know, how you, I mean, we agree that basically the, 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 the whole, the, I mean, the left attitude towards Israel and Jews is, is driven by this intersectionality. It's, it's really, uh, you know, I've, I've talked about this a lot on my show. It's really just a consequence of what they've been studying in school for the last 10 years, 15 yeah. years, really a hundred years, but manifest particularly in the last 10 or 15 years. Uh, did you experience any of this at George Mason? Um, uh, you know, how did it? How, how did you respond when you started seeing this at Harvard and and Columbia and all these places? Oh, so yeah. Um, so I, in part, you know, it was. Um, so I'll guess I'll start with George Mason. So the um, our law school actually is physically separated from oh. the main campus. Um, and the law school has been fantastic. Um, you know, we've had no protests at the law school. No shutting down of of classes and no encampments or anything, um, and there's actually been some you know, debates and some panels held on 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 you know on the international law issues and things of that sort. Uh, the George Mason University itself is one of the universities that's currently under investigation by the Department of Education for failure for to properly protect and re, uh, you know uh, uh, Jews from harassment. Uh, there were a lot of there were the the protests. They didn't have encampments, I, as far as I'm aware, but there were some very aggressive protests and harassments of Jews on George Mason's campus, and the president wasn't responding to it in the same way that that the other presidents at other universities weren't either, you know, it was all context and, oh, you know, we have to be worried about Islamophobia. And, and he literally sent out an email about that while Jews are being assaulted and attacked. Yeah. Um, and, um, and again, and then, you know, when watching the stuff go down, you know, I, I actually, uh, you know, went to graduate school at Columbia university and we all know it's Columbia was, you know, ground zero for the, you know, Columbia and Berkeley were ground zero oh, yeah. for the sixties uh, riots and, um, and protests. Um, you know, and I, I was really tracking this stuff and this is one of the reasons why I kind of engaged more and changed my, my presence on social media and on Twitter, especially on this issue is because I, I was feeling very despondent. Like I, I need to speak out about these issues and I need to address them. Um, and you know, I can't be silent. Um, and you know, there's a, there's kind of a meme that I've adopted. Uh, you know, it's, you know, if you ever wondered what you were doing in 1938 in Berlin, you're doing it now. Um, and, um, and so I, I, I felt as a professor and as a scholar and as someone who is actually in in the academy, I could speak out on these issues in a way that was kind of more effective in terms of my understanding of from the ground of what's going on. Because the reality is, is that as you're on exactly what you've said, you know, the silver lining in all of this happening is that nothing has changed actually in the university in terms of the content and what has been advocated by professors and students for decades now. Uh, it's just that the public has been made aware of it through these protests and yeah. through the congressional hearings. I mean, so all of the stuff that they're saying has been said for years and years in classrooms and and by speakers. And it's just now that they're they're publicizing it outside of the academic context and they're acting on it. They're, so they're actually assaulting Jews and assault and you know and, and and engaging in the type of brown shirt activity that we saw in the 1930s. Yeah, and 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 I think it, it, I, maybe it was always uh, you know anti-Jewish, but it it seemed like it was also kind of anti, just European anti-white, however you want to characterize it in the past, and that was just brushed over because because you know whites are the majority and who cares kind of thing, but. Once they started targeting Jews, people really seem to have woken up to to what is actually going on. 
Yeah, and there was a lot of. You know, Black Lives Matter was the same thing, right? It was mm -hmm. the same, but it, it, you know, maybe it started out as a true protest, but it very quickly descended into clearly just a racist kind of intersectionality, really bad. But it didn't wake people up. People didn't really realize what was behind it. Yeah, in the way that that these protests have. Uh, exactly, and part of it is also kind of most a lot of J most Jews are left of center in yep. some way, shape or form. They're yep. liberal or far left. And they always felt like they 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 were kidding themselves. I mean, they always felt like, well, we're the oppressed. So we're we're class in this intersectionality, DEI, you know, uh, if ideological framework, we're in the oppressed category because we're Jews. And 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 they were lying to themselves because the other people who were teaching intersectionality in DEI were very clear that they embraced this kind of Soviet, you know, framework propaganda of Israel as a white colonial settler state. Yeah. Um, I actually have a Jewish uh, extended Jewish family member who who's Mexican. Uh, his name's Ramon. He's clearly Mexican. And when I saw him last April, I said, "So, Ramon, how does it feel being a white colonial settler?" <laughs> he was like. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, yeah. So, um, and so part of that was also, I think the protest kind of made it very clear to people who, who had been evading. I mean, yep. the reality of this ideology that they had been partner that they had been accommodating and sanctioning for a very long time and agreed with in some respects that, you know, you're actually, you're, you are the people that will be hanging from the lamppost when we get, when, when we take over.